It's very important to analyze the test item in a given test found on the internet. Since it is a teacher-made test, errors could be possible. So before you use the test from the internet with your students, do analyze the several test items and find out whether these test items really are going to test your students' knowledge and skills according to what you have taught them in class. Before moving on to talking to different test items, allow me to introduce myself. Hello, I'm Hana Dimirza. I have a PhD degree in TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language. I'm a, I am an assistant professor, educational consultant, and teacher trainer and researcher. In today's video, I'm going to focus on the different test items, basically the objective ones that you can find on the internet and that might have errors. For example, multiple choice questions, true false items, matching, short answer, and sentence completion. I'm going only to focus on these since they are the objective test items. What do I mean by objective test items? I mean that these items allow only one answer chosen or maybe type and there are no multiple answers. Let's start with the multiple choice question. Let's consider this one. I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to read it and analyze it. There are three major mistakes in this item. Can you find them? Okay, let's read it together. Name the mode of transportation which is controlled by a pilot and stops at an airport. Option 1. Train B. Airplane C. Car and D. Bus First of all, name is not really uh, uh, an action for students. What do you want them to do? To circle the correct answer, for example, circle the mode of transportation if this is on paper and pencil, or if it's simply dots on, uh, let's say it's an electronic item, you can simply tell them to choose the mode of transport and they can tick on the internet, uh, on the computer. Fine, this is the first one. Second one, if you read this item, can't you guess the meaning? without even having to read the text this is a reading comprehension question it could be also a listening comprehension question so by simply reading the test item to name the mode of transportation controlled by a pilot and stops at an airport automatically students are going to circle letter b which is airplane because this is based on their prior knowledge such item is not good enough because students can guess it without referring to the reading passage or to listening audio. Why is this important to understand? If you want to give students bonus points, that's fine. But be sure that this item will not help students learn new reading skills or to apply the reading skills. Because if this is a reading comprehension question, students should refer to the passage in order to find an answer and answer this question. So then since they can easily answer it, so this item is a bad one. If you want to consider it a review of vocab alone on its own, that's fine. But let it be clear that it's a, this is not a good reading comprehension question. The third wrong point is the bus. Bus was never mentioned in the reading passage where I took this item from. So bus is automatically wrong. Even if it's wrong, it should be mentioned inside the text. Otherwise, students will simply rule it out, eliminate it, and find out that this is wrong without even having to think about it. So, 
In order to make this multiple choice question correct, we have first to have to say choose or circle the mode of transportation and we have to change this item so that students can go to the text, find the answer and come and write it down. Let's move on to the next test item, which is the true false items. Again, what do we mean by an item is true? True if it is a paraphrase of whatever is found in the text. Whenever I say text, it could be reading text or audio because reading and listening are basically related to comprehension and we want students to make sure that they understood what they heard or they understood what they read. So, if we say that the test item is true, it means that this statement is a paraphrase of whatever is found in the text. If it is false, it means there is something wrong in this item. If you just read it, walking is the mode of transportation which does not cost money. Without referring to the text, this item is correct. It's automatically true. So, it's better to find another item or to paraphrase it maybe differently in such a way that students won't find it true. And it is true in the text. So automatically the students are going to get it right even without having to understand what the text is saying. Let's move on. Let's move on to the third type, matching. In the matching exercises also we have two columns basically, column A which is to the left and column B which is to the right. And what do we need to see in here? We have plane, we have also train, so two modes of transportation. We have connected, so automatically connected and related the students are going to link them automatically because they are in the uh, this is the past participle or the simple past tense and then you have station and airport so what do we need to do we need to link these modes of transportation and also link plane and train to wherever they have stops so this is basically a mixed matching instead we could have for example all the modes of transportation on the left side and where they stop on the right side. Here we can simply ask students to match the words in column A to the words in column B. Second wrong thing, it is not advisable to give students exact number of items in each column. It's definitely more advisable to add more column to the next one, to column B, which is to the right, this way, the students are not going to guess the third item. If, for example, they didn't understand what they mean by station, they can relate connected to related and relate airport to plane. So automatically, station and train are going to be related and they're going to be correct. So let's move on now to the fourth, fourth type, the short answer. Here, Students are only supposed to write a word or maximum a phrase, a couple of words. And this is a question that has a very direct answer. No multiple answers, just one. So, which mode of transportation is ideal for traveling between countries? connected by land. So, countries connected by land. What is wrong with this item is that traveling between countries connected by land is found as is in the text. And the text says that people use train to travel between countries connected by land. So, students can easily scan the text and find this item. Again, it should be a paraphrase. Um, the paraphrase should not include
clues or words that student can use to scan the text to find the answer. Remember, this is reading comprehension or listening comprehension and students should show understanding by simply explaining to themselves or finding the answer without giving them the clues. The next one and the last one in the objective items is the sentence completion. In this item, we provide, let's say, a full sentence and there is a blank and students need to fill in the blanks with the missing word supposedly from the text. Here again, can you guess what's wrong? Okay, let's try let's read it together. Travel sickness. So here we're talking about traveling sickness. Means that people will become very unwell each time and there is a blank. Here again, in the text, they said, they explained, they went by traveling sickness and they explained it in the text as is, that people will become unwell each time and they said in the text, they travel by train. So here again, we're giving students clues. And what are we supposed to do in here? We're supposed to paraphrase it in such a way that student cannot really scan and guess it without understanding. What can we do? First of all, for instructions, it should be very clear. Fill in the blanks with maximum three words to complete the sentences below. So maybe it's, a, it's one word, maybe two, maybe three. So I want them to have uh, up to three words and I repeat, fill in the blanks with maximum three words to complete the sentences below. And I have to paraphrase it, paraphrase this properly by saying, for example, some people can be sick, can be ill, if I don't want to put the word sickness, some people can be ill traveling due to dot 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 and they have to fill with travel sickness. This way I paraphrase the item, I provided them with maximum three words to fill it. They have to go to the text and find it because I didn't give them any clue. Let's go back now to number four, which is, which is the short answer. Here again, I have to ask student a question and they have to provide me with a word or a phrase in order to answer the question from the text. So a good instruction could be answer the following question in, I can mention it, in maximum two words. So again, which mode of transportation is ideal for traveling between countries connected by land? So instead of saying this, we can say people traveling from country to another okay, can use dot 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 as a mode of transportation stopping at a station. So in this case, it's going to be the train. Here again, I paraphrased, I gave them um, uh, context clues and they have to go to the text and find the answer. Let's go back now to the third type, the matching exercise. Instead of having only Instead of having only a plane and train, I could list all the other items, plane, train, car, boat, they are all in the text. And, and the second item, 
I can have all the different stations and I can add one more to have four in the fourth uh, in the left column and five items in the right column and I can give a clear instruction by saying link or match because this is a matching exercise match the mode of transportation in column A to their stops in column B there is one extra word that you do not need to use on this way I provided students with clear instruction with extra words so that we don't have guessings and they have to go to the text and find it. Here it happens that the mode and trust of transportation are easy for kids. That's why they can guess it easily. If we go now to the true false items. Here again, I should paraphrase it properly. If I want to say walking is the mode of transportation, which does not cost money, okay. So maybe I, if I want to paraphrase it better, I would say walking is the cheapest mode of transportation. This way I don't have to say cost money, which is what is found inside the text and students have to understand uh, that cost doesn't cost money means it's cheap and they can get it and get it correctly by circling the true item. Here the instruction could be circle t, letter T, if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. Correct the false statements. It's very important. So here if you can see, I wrote T and F, then the statement, and under it I provided a line in case they would like to correct it uh, if it is a false statement. It's not advisable to ask the student to write true or write false just have it this way is much easier and um, it's not advisable also to ask students to write t if it is true and f if it is false because some students can write the t like an f and they can have the everything correct so it's better to write them down this way the students if it's going to circle it they cannot circle both of them sometimes we have a third option t f n which is true, false, not mentioned, if you want to make it a bit more challenging as well. And I provide always the same line and the same structure for all the items under each other. This way students cannot guess which one is true, which one is false, because all of them have a line under them in case they would like to write the answer. And last one for today, which is the multiple choice question. If I want to give them the instruction, I would say, circle the best answer. Okay? A, B, C, or D. Now, if it is only a choice on the computer and they have to tick it, I can say, choose the best answer, A, B, C, or D. This way, I gave them a clear answer. And here again, we mentioned that this item could be much better by simply giving students the paraphrase a statement without any clue so that they go to the text and find the correct answer. So these are basically our, our items, the four ones that we worked on, the matching, the true-false, and uh, the short answer. Finally, we have the sentence completion. And at the end, I would like to share with you my contacts. If you would like to have more